You know, I, I prepared to come in and debate the Lieberman Warner climate change bill. That was amended by the Boxer Amendment, and so I'm prepared to talk about that. We have another energy bill that's come before it. But, you know, in general terms, I'd just like to take a moment to discuss uh, uh, climate change uh, here because that's obviously the main topic that we have for you. And I have uh, concerns about the science that some people are claiming here on the floor of the Senate. I think that, obviously, if we're going to have good policy, we have to have good science. And, uh, you know, there's been some quick solutions that have been consistently proposed by the other side whenever they think we have high gas prices at the pump, and I want to say just a few things about that, too, as I may. But um, let me just say, basically, from the reports that I've seen, uh, I think it's unclear as to what the long-range trend is as far as the temperature of the Earth is concerned. Uh, I, I, I would admit that right now we're doing, we're maybe through a warming period, maybe the last few years, actually it may have cooled just a fraction of a degree. Uh, and I'm recalling when I uh, was uh, uh, in high school in the 1950s, late 1950s, that uh, we had magazine articles, uh, uh, National Geographic, and everybody was writing about how we were into a, a cold trend, that we were heading towards an ice age. And now we're heading towards the trend, the headlines now is that we're, we have global warming. Uh, what I have seen, which I think needs to be brought into consideration, I've listened to some of the comments here on the floor, but a comment that sickens is we're the highest on record. The problem is, is that the record that we have of the Earth's warming and cooling is a relatively short period of time concerned when you look at the total history of the Earth. And if you go back to the year around 1000, for example, measuring based on some scientific evidence that's gotten obtained from our polar caps by going down through the depths of the ice and analyzing it, some scientists have come up with the conclusion that actually it was warmer in the year 1000 than it is now. You can't blame that on human uh, being hewn by, by human action. So the question comes up, is this whether a, um, a trend a natural cycle that happens that's related to sunspots or volcanic activity or what natural phenomena might be happening there. I, I happen to agree that we probably contribute some to global warming. The question is, is how much? And that hasn't been adequately identified either. So I'm here to raise some questions. You know, obviously, if we absolutely know we're headed for a catastrophe, the sooner we act, the better. But on the other hand, we don't want to overreact either. We could cause problems for our economy. We can cause problems. Uh, for Mother Earth if we react in the wrong way with having had good scientific evidence. So I, I'm rather disappointed that we're not having an opportunity to uh, debate this and amend it like we should. No, no uh, piece of legislation is perfect, and obviously there needs to be an opportunity for things to be uh, amended on these uh, bills to be amended when they come to the floor. So I'm very disappointed uh, that the majority leader has filled the amendment tree, and filed for cloture rather than allowing for a full and healthy debate that is such a rich part of our Senate history. Now, since uh, this bill's been introduced, we have record high gas, pay, gas prices. You know, there's pain at the pump. And, um, you know, the common solution we've heard time and time again whenever we have high uh, petroleum prices is, well, somehow or the other, you need to raise taxes and you need to limit supplies and you need to blame corporations and you need to somehow or the other blame our, blame our, you know, control our international cartels. You can't, you can't control what isn't part of America. You know, what happens in international cartels, we can't pass laws and tell them what they, whether they can form a cartel or not, what they can do. It's beyond our reach. But we can take care of, of corporate mis, misbehavior here in this country. We've had hearings time and time again trying to blame oil companies for overcharging and whatnot. And over the years, their conclusion is that, look, there has not been any, uh, any misbehavior as far as uh, corporations setting, uh, setting prices. That they are responding to supplies. They are supplying to the cost of the product and taking a reasonable profit and putting that on the market. I happen to feel that supply and demand has the greatest impact of our uh, prices at the pump here today. So obviously, uh, Mr. Pre Madam President, this is, it's not a perfect process, it's not a perfect bill, uh, and we need to uh, bring the bills to the floor, provide, provide an opportunity for substitutes uh, 
to be brought forward and then an opportunity to amend those so i'm very disappointed that we're not having an opportunity to do that that seems to be the trend this year that the republicans are not having the opportunity to bring up issues that they think are important on legislation that comes on the floor. That's happened time and time again. And then the other side blames uh, Republicans for somehow or the other blocking the process. Well, if you don't have an opportunity to, uh, to make amendments to the bills, uh, I, that's a serious uh, concern to those of us who have to work in the minority in an institution like the United States Senate where they have specific minority rights. Um, I'd like to go ahead and address uh, some of the concerns to the Boxer Amendment to the Warner-Lieberman climate change bill. My first and foremost concern, as I mentioned earlier, is the science on which the entire bill is based. But because the ranking member of the Environment and Public Works Committee has asked us to leave science aside and focus on the legislation itself, so I'll start there. Uh, based on many, many reports I've seen, it is unclear what, if any, effect climate change legislation would have on global temperatures. However, its potential economic impacts are staggering, absolutely staggering. However, its potential, uh, the primary tool this bill uses to reduce greenhouse gases is a cap and trade program. But it should be, ac but it should be more accurately be called a cap and tax program because it is essentially a camouflaged energy tax increase. Many of the proponents of this bill have said it's just like the program the Government Institute to control acid rain. But unlike sulfur dioxide in the acid rain program, there is no widely deployable control system for CO2 removal, nor do we expect this equipment to exist in the reasonable foreseeable future. This will result in significant increased costs to electric utilities and their consumers, as well as affected industries and their, their customers. That's the taxpayers of this country. Thus, the cost of compliance will have a significant negative economic impact on electric consumers statewide and Colorado's manufacturing industries. A recent study produced by the Heritage Foundation Center for Data Analysis found that enacting this bill would cost Colorado almost 7,000 agricultural-based jobs and over 21,000 manufacturing jobs. That is over 27,000 lost jobs in Colorado alone. The same study found that statewide, Colorado would have a personal income loss of around $2.162 billion. This bill also contains a provision in Section 201, which was originally formulated for the acid rain program. This provision specifically denies that emissions allowances which will be given out by the government are to be considered a, are not are to be considered a property right. The provision also allows the administrator uh, uh, to limit or revoke the allowances at any time. Specifying that allowances are not property is therefore the government's right to avoid a taking in the inevitable instance that the administrator does revoke allowances. So how do we justify this? The government enables itself to give a product, set up a scheme for buying and trading that product, but at any time and for any reason revoke that product without compensation. While there is certainly legal precedent that that does not make it right. In my view, this challenges the assertions that the bill sponsors are making that their cap and trade approach is a market-based one. I will propose an amendment if given that opportunity I've, cert I've filed it by the one o'clock deadline, to fix this by specifying that emissions allowances are property rights, and while the government could still limit or revoke allowances, it would have to compensate the owners of allowances in order to do so. It is only fair that the government would have to follow the same rules it sets out for industry to follow when buying and selling allowances. Mr. President, Madam President, if we allow this legislation to go forward in its current form, we will see energy prices go up. The national cost of gas today averages around $4 a gallon. This will only go up if we pass the climate change bill. Coloradoans are currently feeling pain at the pump, but if we pass this bill, they'll feel it in their homes also. One of Colorado's municipally owned utility providers has informed me that when this bill takes full effect in 2012, that their customers will immediately see their utility bill jump 
above 25 percent. Another utility, Tri-State, which provides electric power for 1.2 million rural electric consumers Let's uh, consume in ten a minutes. poor state. I asked uh, additional 30 seconds if I may to summarize. Without objection. So, Madam President, I would ask permission to put my full statement in the record. Without objection. And Madam President, I just summarized that this is a, a poorly uh, thought out uh, piece of legislation. I think we need to have an opportunity uh, to uh, legislate, to put amendments on it, and move forward with, I think, this really important debate. This is a very comprehensive piece of legislation. It's important. It involves lots of Americans. And so uh, I'm, I'm disappointed that we're not going to have an opportunity to, uh, under the current uh, process in the Senate, amend uh, this issue. Thank you very much, Madam Chairman.